Hey all, here OS Reviews. Today we're taking a closer look at Sailfish OS, a mobile operating system that was built on the foundation of Nokia's short-lived Mego OS, which was introduced on the ill-fated N9, but still remains as one of the most beautifully designed smartphones in history, in my opinion. And they were exceptionally ahead of the time in terms of the way the UI felt with its universal dark themes that matched quite well with the AMOLED display, as well as its intuitive gesture navigation system, which has since been borrowed by Android as well as iOS, the two dominant mobile operating systems here in 2023. So Sailfish OS has about 80% the code of Mego OS, and as a result, it's no surprise that many elements, including some of the icons, in fact, and some of the fundamental ways that the UI works is quite similar when we compare them side by side. Believe it or not, Sailfish is now reaching 10 years old. They came out in 2013 with the Yola phone that was their only hardware-based product, but later on they made the software available for other smartphones to port and install. And interestingly, a lot of Sony Xperia phones are kind of the go-to products which are compatible with Sailfish OS, such as in this video, we are taking a look at it through a Xperia XA2. But aside from the XA2, other phones which support Sailfish OS include the Xperia 10s, various generations, as well as the Gemini, which in itself is a pretty cool modern revival of a classic PDA from back in its day. This Linux-based operating system provides a couple of benefits, aside from just being pretty cool since it is rather rare in the wild. First of all, it has privacy up front, so a lot of the capabilities here are very easy to customize. Namely, Yola claims that they have also partnered with certain corporations and even governments manage devices using the Sailfish OS that we see today. And that sense of privacy also prevails in the apps and services because it's not something that is created by Google, so you don't have the Play services and native Google apps directly on the unit. And so if you don't want, say, Google to be always tracking your data, one reason at least to consider Sailfish OS, plus the fact that through updates, Yola have released the ability for you to install certain Android apps in isolated sandboxes. So the experience is actually very similar to BlackBerry OS, where in the later days, BlackBerry allowed users to install Android APKs on the phone because natively, applications in the Sailfish store as well as in the BlackBerry store, you just have less app developers compared to Android and iOS because they reach a larger set of customers. The fact that you are able to also leverage some of those apps and run it on the phone is quite clever. Last but not least, the process of installing Sailfish OS is surprisingly easy as well and well documented on their website, taking less than 5 to 10 minutes to get it up and running. Just make sure to back up your data if you were running Android before you install the new operating system so you don't lose any of your data. I will also mention that they have both free and paid versions of the software officially available through their licensing. So the free version is what we have on this particular device, but paid versions will have extra perks including Microsoft Exchange email client support, predictive text input, and newer versions of Android app support as well. We start off with this main lock screen with an oversized clock. I would say it's not too different from other modern OSs in that department, and it does support biometrics, including fingerprint for unlocking, so that also works without too many issues. And once you do unlock, you have access to a drawer that you can pull up for all of your apps. So this is one area that has been changed compared to Mego OS. I mean, all the applications were still in a vertical scrolling manner, but it was just one of the main home screen pages that you could access in the carousel as opposed to having to pull it up using the separate motion. And we can also drag down to access the notification shade, which also gets you access to a couple of quick shortcuts for changing the theme. So these are mostly cosmetic differences, and it's similar to what Android 13 has in terms of if you're changing, say, the wallpaper, it also changed the icons and just the color palette as well. But you get that similar experience here where this one now has everything a little bit more orange in terms of the color. This one called Harmony is going to turn more of a violet shade, as you can see there. There. All of the subtle transitions there also I think are done quite tastefully. Otherwise, if we do slide left and right, we have basically two pages. Uh, the first one that we had here by default also houses your currently open applications for multitasking. So for instance, if I open up the clock app, 
you'll see that we can swipe from either the top corner or from the left side basically to exit that application and those open apps will be displayed as cards on this main page which we can then long hold for getting rid of a pretty intuitive process and then swiping over to the left again will show you just your notifications as well as a quick weather widget there at the top so just a two panel system which is very easy to use on both of these pages you can swipe up to access the full drawer of additional apps so the multitasking experience hasn't really changed I would say. You can still again use those same gestures and you'll see those open apps being displayed as cards like in the Mego days as you can see here which is pretty cool and then similarly long hold for getting rid of those applications and it still works flawlessly just like before and there's access to the widgets as well as notification screen here as well so very similar. Selection of Sony as a partner was also clever in the sense that the XA2 for example, has a curved 2.5D glass on the left and right sides, which means that if you're using it for gesture navigation, it just feels a lot more intuitive and smooth, almost like it was meant for something like this from the get-go. The clock app also relies heavily on gestures where we can actually pull down to trigger additional contextual menus, including setting up new timers. And now jumping back into the main screen, other utility tools that you get by default, including an audio recorder, as well as a notes, media app. These are all, of course, completely different from what you get from Android or iOS. And there really is a sense of beauty in the minimalism of this entire UI. So this is the notepad, for example, and you can see this tiny little dot there that indicates you can go back by one page by swiping there, but there are no kind of arrows or additional text that really displays extra information, even the color palette of the notes you can further customize down below there, and we can bring up the keyboard to begin typing, swipe down to collapse the keyboard. It's almost like relearning an entire way of interacting with a phone, and I have to say I do quite like the philosophy behind this. Otherwise, we do have access to a store, the Yola store that is, which will provide some applications native to Sailfish OS. For instance, we can find right now here, there has been a chat GPT app and you can access anything you would otherwise need from the browser. Plus again, the ability to install Android apps as well as another alternative. As this thing is installing, we can swipe back and you can check out another example of what apps can be found. So top ones such as Here Maps have also been made available. So Here, of course, was previously a branch of Nokia and it powered all of the maps and navigation tech on older Nokia phones. So it's really cool to still see that DNA, that Finnish legacy preserved in a way through this Sailfish OS store. Uh, but again, you're not getting too many games uh, on here. It's mostly just utility tools and the basics. But I would argue if you're looking for minimalism as well as you are someone that really only needs to make calls and texts, it's actually all you need to get by. Anyways, returning us into the previous screen, you'll also find again under the games folder, this is the selection mostly more limited puzzle style games, Sudoku, that's what you can expect on the native titles on here, but again, they can still be something to play when you need to waste a little bit of time in a pinch. You'll also find some more geeky titles like a text editor or a code editor even available, some music production tools, that's kind of the type of utilities uh, that you can expect on this particular store. Now, as for areas of weakness, I would say camera is not the strongest, especially when compared to some of the default apps, uh, because there's often more optimization done from manufacturers like Sony uh, to work with their lens tech compared to a operating system that you're slapping onto another phone. And the Sailfish OS camera app by default doesn't have quite as many advanced features either. It has all the basics, but computational photography in terms of auto HDR, as well as some of the boosting effects you just don't quite get compared to something like Gcam, for example. In fact, here's some example footage captured using the camera lens. When there's sufficient lighting, you can still get a good amount of detail, although again, maybe not the best in the world, but will still suffice. When you flip the orientation of the phone around, the bottom here still reacts as the drawer, as you can see there, which is kind of fun because of its compatibility with the Gemini PDA, which is always gonna be in this landscape mode. And so you can still swipe from the corners instead to exit the application. And again, these are all tiles which are fully running in the background. If there's a video playing, you can even see it starting to move and animate, which is pretty cool. It's actually holding the programs here much better than I expected 
expected and I often got from native Android. And I suspect part of it is because the platform is also lighter. There are less frameworks as well as, again, kind of Google services always running in the background. Even on limited hardware, you're still getting a decent experience uh, as you can see here. Let's also jump into the browser next and see how that particular process fares. So what I do like is similar to Windows Phone, it has the address bar at the very bottom, which makes it easier to press without reaching as far up with your hands. Quickly jump into a private tab, save your page as PDF, or even view the desktop version of the site. And the experience still feels reasonable too. Even if you're playing back, say, YouTube videos or Netflix from the browser directly, as you can see there, it still is functional. The volume bar, by the way, just displays at the very top, also quite elegant and everything still works as you would expect. Here's also a quick demo of searching up some other web pages to serve as a reference, such as The Verge. So it does take a few seconds extra to render, so some of the browser optimization might not be 100% quite as good as the latest version of Chrome, but again, news articles can certainly still be read, and the basics can be handled on here. Again, keeping in mind that there are more powerful hardware that you can choose instead, the XA2 being one of the weaker spec phones that are supporting the Sailfish OS. Here's just a couple of, again, very limited titles to give you an example of what you can expect in the default Sailfish store. So there is kind of a Flappy Bird inspired game. Also feels smooth enough as you're interacting with the phone and generally working well enough. And so that also goes without saying that essentials such as communications that doesn't get affected by installing the operating system. So that is more or less it as far as our closer look at Sailfish OS here in 2023 and my verdict would be it is still a pretty compelling platform since you can still do pretty much everything you would need on a smartphone on here to be honest and it's all done in a pretty intuitive and beautiful UI which is simple but gets the basics done. Of course if you want more demanding gameplay as well as you're looking after the most seamless Google integration then Sailfish to begin with is not going to be the platform for you but it provides a very good alternative I think for folks looking for something just a little bit different maybe you want to detox from some of the more mainstream alternatives. And overall great to see the legacy started with the Nokia N9 still live on, at least in spirit, with the Sailfish OS. You can check out additional details if interested in the links down below, but for now that's been our video. Thanks for watching here at OS Reviews.